Um, so what I'm going to talk about tonight, just an overview of domestic waste generation, just to give you a few facts. Um, there won't be quite, there won't be a, a quiz at the end, so you don't have to remember the figures. But um, just to give you, I suppose, an idea of the scale of it. Um, where does it go? What happens once you do your cycling, or once you put it in your bin? Where does it go out the back door? Um, what shapes our waste management infrastructure um, at European? and national level and is there any more we can do a, a lot of people kind of get to the stage that they separate out their waste um, but I suppose as Michael said there's, there's different myths about where it goes after that so um, I suppose I'll briefly talk about that um, I think Mary is going to talk a bit more about that so I won't do too much detail on that and then we'll have some questions so basically over uh, one and a half million tonnes of domestic waste uh, was generated in 2009. The figures we have are 2009 because the EPA produces national waste reports. They're always kind of takes them a couple of years to get the information in, um, assimilated and spit it back out into a report form. Um, of that, over a million tonnes went to landfill. So that's roughly about 237 kilos per person per year. Ten years ago, it was 375 kilos, so um, you might think, yay, we've reduced that a bit, but a lot of that is to do with the recession. A lot of people don't have as much money, uh, consumer purchases are down, therefore the waste is down. But it is also to do with the fact that, that people are recycling a bit more. So we had in 2009 a 26% household waste recovery. Now, the EPA have started reporting their figures as recovery, they used to report them as, as recycling, but um, as I go through this, you'll see that there's kind of more options than recycling that, that are been put into the band of recovery, some of which people agree with, some of which some don't. Um, and then just to give you an idea, 96% of households have their two bin service, which one is for your municipal waste, one is for your mixed dry recyclables, and only 24% countrywide have a three bin service that third bin being your organic waste. Cork doesn't have an organic waste collection system at the moment. There are plans to put one in place, um, but it, it's just it's logistics, I suppose, and, and money. Um, my elephants have changed colour. Um, they were natural colour earlier on today. Um, just to give you an example of, of one of the types of waste, food waste generation, um, there was... Uh, biodegradable waste, um, there was equivalent of 700,000 cars where the biodegradable waste produced or went to landfill in 2009, um, or the equivalent of 240,000 elephants. For every 100 tonnes of biodegradable waste that went to landfill, <coughs> only 6 tonnes went into the roadside bins, which that was the 24% that I mentioned there. Um, and an estimated uh, six tonnes that went to home composting. Those figures are kind of quite loose in terms of the home composting because you're just depending on getting feedback from people in terms of what they are actually composting. So briefly, this was something we all know, where we're generating our food waste, our, for our, our domestic waste, um, leftovers out of date food, packaging, items that are broken that people don't bother getting repaired or it's too costly to repair. Um, obsolete items, clothes that were in fashion last year and not in fashion this year, toys, any kind of equipment, garden waste, and then things like newspapers, mail, um, books, that kind of stuff. So, as I was saying, um, the waste reports now refer to recovered waste rather than recycled. Um, and that is largely <coughs> due to the um, SRF, which I'll, I'll tell you about now. Um, but firstly, composted waste. Um, 
they consider um, a lot of the organic waste that's collected from your doors is sent off <coughs> to composting units. Now, because there's still quite a... In some areas, you get a very good um, reaction to the organic bins. It'll just be what's supposed to be in those bins. In other areas, you will get absolutely anything. I mean, people will still put stuff that they're not supposed to put into the bins. Um, and same with the dry recyclable bins. Because of that, you're still getting bits of plastic. You might get bits of metal. You know, you, you get um, stuff into the compost bins that... Um, it, it makes the compost that they produce of much poorer quality. Because of that, that compost then is not like the stuff that you get in your garden centre that's really good, that you want to have in your garden. It's, it's not of a high enough quality. So a lot of it is actually used as landfill cover now, so capping off of landfill cells. So that's what they're using, a lot of the organic waste that gets composted from your homes. Um, municipal solid waste... Um, that is when that's taken away in your black bin it's brought to centers where they separate it out again and they try and take out if they've got any recyclables they can take out they will take them out but they now are taking out like scraps of material like plastics cardboard um, some organic that isn't fit for recycling as such but it's still actually worth something in terms of it's got it's got energy or calorific value they call that solid recovered fuel or uh, refuse derived fuel, so SRF or RDF. So some of your municipal waste isn't going to landfill. It is actually going and becoming this um, SRF. Recyclables then, so if it's clean, again, if your bins are pristine and you've just got your clean cardboard and your clean plastic in there, they will be separated out at centres around the country, uh, baled or shredded and then baled and then sent off and as Michael was saying, does it all end up in China? Well, unfortunately, a lot of the recyclable materials do go to China, India, Europe, and the UK. China is the biggest market at the moment for recyclable materials. Um, they're paying money for them. They can't get enough of them. Their economy is growing hugely, and um, they're taking a lot of cardboard and plastic at the moment. Um, and then there's contaminated recyclables. Um, if the recyclables are your dry recyclables, again, cardboard that would be coated in food, grease, that kind of stuff that they can't actually recycle, um, that will go into the SRF pile. So just briefly, I don't want to bog you down with uh, too much technical detail, but what SRF and RDF are, um, they're very similar. SRF is the solid uh, recovered <coughs> fuel that's just a slightly more refined version of the RDF. It's just that in Europe there's a standard that you ha has to conform to to be considered um, SRF. RDF is, is might a slightly poorer quality of it. Um, so, you know, you, in, in terms of the content of it, the size of the particles and that kind of thing, there is a standard that it has to meet. Where do they come from? As I said, um, the combustible components that come from your municipal solid waste. What they do is they um, shred, dehydrate break down the solid waste um, and <coughs> mechanical biological treatment is the process that it's done by um, this is manual and mechanical processing and biological stabilisation at present in the country there's no proper <coughs> MBT facility they are looking into investing in it a lot of private companies it's just <coughs> trying to make sure that the, there's, um, the whole infrastructure is in place so that they will actually profit from it and that they will run smoothly when they do it so it is kind of being look, looked into at the moment that is what it looks like it's not particularly attractive but um, it's, it's basically kind of like a wet sawdusty kind of clammy type material so where does that go um, your waste when it goes out the back door it's not recycled it's not landfill this bit in between where does it go they use it as fuel um, Cement kilns in Ireland is the main place where they're using it and they are substituting fuels, fossil fuels and they're putting this stuff in in its place. Um, waste energy plants, power plants, incinerators also take it and um, so there's, there's Irish cement, Lagan cement and Quinn cement, I think they're in Cavan, are taken at the moment. So they have a high calorific value 
they want a low moisture content, no metals or chlorides in it, and consistent particle size. That's basically what, what it'll be, what it should be when it goes to them. And you can see, I mean, it has actually got a high calorific value. I mean, it's higher than coal, the lignite version of coal, um, higher than peat, and it's higher than wood. Um, and meat and bone meal, MBM is meat and bone meal, which they also burn in these facilities. Um, it doesn't have a high energy content as a lot of the fossil fuels do, but if you're getting this as a, a free fuel rather than a fossil fuel, this is where the argument comes into play. Should you actually be burning this? Or, you know, there's certain environmental forums will be very much against it. Some are for it. And... Um, Personally, I think there is a place for it, but um, only a certain percentage should it, it should only take up a certain percentage. But again, we'll get to that in a bit more detail. So, what happens? Your recycling, uh, your dry, dry recyclables. Uh, most of it goes abroad eventually. Um, India, China, UK, and Europe. Um, we found with clients of ours that would have a lot of dry recyclables. Um, it depends on the markets at any one time. It, can, it tends to follow the commodities markets. So things like aluminium and copper are becoming quite scarce now. So your aluminium cans, copper wiring from construction, that kind of thing, are getting huge amounts of money and they're in demand. So you'll find that the, the waste companies, whatever, you know, wherever they're getting the best price, that's where they're going to send their they're dry recyclables. Um, a lot goes to the UK, Germany, and Europe, Spain takes them. There's very little processing in Ireland. There is, it's more kind of the first stages of processing, and when the materials get to a certain stage, that's when they divide up and they, they send them off to different places. Um, some does. I mean, there's some great recycling facilities in Ireland. Shabra Plastics up at Monaghan. If you're ever up that direction, I'd recommend a, a visit because they they take all sorts of plastics in PET and HTP, like the hard plastics and the pa plastic bottles, your Ballygown bottles, that kind of stuff, and they turn it into lots of different things. Like they produce new bin liners, they um, produce. I'm not sure if they're doing fleeces now, but I know a lot of plastic places do, um, and they they they're doing great up there, you know. So um, there's definitely a place for it. Glass, uh, Queen Glass, as far as I know, is the only glass recycling um, place in Ireland at the moment. Um, it was interesting, I was having a look through um, some of the, the waste management sites, the waste contractors, and they all kind of give the impression that they're doing the recycling here in Ireland, that they, they go from their collection and bringing it down to their facility and cleaning it and, shred and crushing it, separating it out into the colours, and then they go, and then it is recycled. They don't say, here on this site, we recycle it. And I rang a few of them just to make sure, because I, I was sure that there was nowhere in Ireland doing it. And they were like, oh, no, no, they, it goes abroad after that. So they kind of like to give the impression that it stays in <coughs> Ireland, but unfortunately uh, it doesn't. Um, paint, um, your old paint can be recycled, and it, it is through um, Enva in Ireland, and there's a few others that... Um, they distill it, they use it in heavy industries. Your cooking oil or <coughs> your engine oil from, you know, if you're a DIY mechanic at home, um, they can filter that out and they use it for asphalt manufacture. Um, they can make biodiesel out of it. So that's a thriving industry at the moment. Um, there's a few companies take that in Ireland. Batteries would be sent abroad off to Germany, so your cadmium, your nickel, your lithium batteries, all of that, um, they, send, they more or less send the whole battery abroad to, to recycle. Um, fluorescent tubes, again, they, sent the they send the mercury abroad, any of the heavy metals tend to, to go leave Ireland. 